Good morning, church. If you can stand and get ready to worship with us, you should all know this song by now. We've been singing it for the past four weeks, so let's get ready to worship together, okay? Separated, but the breeze. 
which was far too wide far the far side of the chasm you held me in your side so you made a way across the great divide left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside at the cross, you pay the debt I owe. Broke my chains, freed my soul. For the first time I had hope. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. saved my life brought me from the darkness into glorious light thank you jesus thank you jesus you took my place laid inside my tomb of sin and you were buried for three days but then you walked right out again And now death has no sting And life has no end For I have been transformed By the blood of the Lamb Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied Wash me wide. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You have saved my life. You brought me from the darkness into glorious light. And there is nothing short.
come burdened, empty, tired, Father God, we can still say hallelujah. Father, you're good. You're good, Father God. Through every storm, through every emotion, through every trial, Father God, you are good. So would you be, would you be glorified today, Lord? Would you be glorified? despite the way we feel, despite the way we might be, be, be thinking, despite the situation we might be in, Father God, may you receive your glory. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah, Father God. We thank you, Father. Thank you for your mercy, Father God. Thank you for your grace, Father God. Thank you for your provision, Father, your guidance, your counsel. Father God, would you continue to open our eyes to see your goodness, to see your hand upon us, Father God. And I just, I just pray right now, Father God, that you would continue to prepare the ground. You would prepare the ground right now, Father God, and plant the seeds needed, Father God, for the lives in this place, Lord. Plant the seeds for us, Father God, and may it be watered today. Father God, may we, obe may we be obedient to your plan, Father God, to your purpose. May you increase and may we decrease, Father God. Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for all that you're doing, Father God. Thank you for bringing back our kids just safely from kids camp this week, Father God and everything that you've done there, Father God. We, we just thank you, praise you, Father God. Thank you for those that have traveled and also made it back safely, Father God. Glory to your name, Lord. But Lord, would you just hear the hearts in this place today, Father God? Lord, would you hear the hearts and move in a way that only you can move, Father God? Prepare the ground, Father God. Set the atmosphere in this place. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you for your presence. You're welcome at all times. Jesus. Jesus. Can we sing that one more time? So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I've nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give him glory. Let's give him glory. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. Man, I don't know about some of you, but this song today is, um, is just for me. <laughs> you know um, sometimes you just have days where you just have these emotions and you know not every day is sunny and bright and sometimes all you have is the hallelujah and this blessed me so much thank you worship team for singing this because <laughs> hallelujah like sometimes that's all you have but it's enough it's enough if you'll give it to him so <laughs> praise God praise God um, as you guys know the uh, our students some of our students came from, from kids camp. You may be seated. You may be seated. Some of our students came from kids camp, and uh, I believe they had an amazing time, I'm sure. Uh, but Alexa, Alexa was leading up. Let's give a hand for Alexa. Woo! She was leading up this week Woo! as she was with some of your students. And I know she has a whole bunch to, to share, and I think you have some other students to share, right? So I'll... Thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Hi. Good morning. Um, Ariana, you want to come up here with me? Yeah? Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, we got to go to kids camp this week, me and Juliana and Ariana and two other students who didn't get to be here today. But 
Um, I went as a counselor. It was my first time going as a counselor, and it was just an amazing experience. Super encouraging and humbling to get to speak into these students' lives and watch them just want Jesus and want to get closer to him, and it was just super, super cool. I also want to thank you guys for supporting us financially and your prayers and everything. We really appreciate that. And Ariana wants to share some stuff. Um, when I got to kids camp, I was thinking that um, we were going to have a really fun time and during service we would all sing, dance, like the usual stuff, but God had a different plan for us all and me. On the first day at service, after all the singing and dancing, I started to pray and I asked God to move through me with his Holy Spirit and I worshipped him and I started to cry and I knew it was the Holy Spirit and now I really know he answers your prayers, so never doubt him. A little while later, my whole cabin got together and we started to pray for a friend who was going through a really hard time in her life. And we all really felt God's presence. And on the second day and on for the whole rest, whole rest of the week, we were all praising and worshiping God on our knees, sobbing and praying for each other. On Tuesday, God did something that I never thought, that I never would have expected. He spoke to me and he said to trust him, to let him into my heart and to continue praising him. Then on Wednesday, I felt him touching me and praying for me. So let's just say he was really moving. God helped me and so many other kids at kids camp know that we are all special in our own way, that God made us in his image and that he loves us no matter what we look like. First Samuel 16 verse says, um, the Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So to sum it up, we all had a great time and also leveled up with God. Um, so as you can see, I mean, how incredible is it that even our young 10, 11 year olds can just really express who God is and really show that, I mean, all the kids there were so on fire and there wasn't a lot of kids. There was only 77 of them this year at camp, um, which I mean, maybe for our church is a lot, <laughs> but for camp it's, it's not really, but there's something about smaller groups that's so much more intimate. Um, and I really do believe that God was using our little angel here um, to move through people. Um, I mean, I was a witness to her working um, and her praying over people. And it really, truly is amazing. Every year that I go, it's like, wow. Um, so thank you for sharing that, hon. Um, yeah, and it's actually, yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, and it's really funny that she, uh, shared that verse, is First Samuel 16, 7, um, because a lot of what, like, the kids were testifying about, like, they would just get up on stage and, like, grab the mic and start talking, um, <laughs> a lot of what they were testifying about was, um, what other people think of them versus what God thinks of them, right? I mean, a lot, a lot, a lot. A lot of people testifying about bullying and about, like, friends and just, like, being pressured into thinking certain things about themselves, um, but then realizing that it doesn't matter, that, it, you know, we're all made in the image of God. Um, so that was just really awesome. Thank you, Ariana. And thank all of you guys for, again, for supporting us and supporting our children. Thank you. Hey, could, could we just sing that even together? So I throw my hands right in there. Sure. Right in there. You get the right key. You'll get oh, the right key. Let's just flip So I throw up my hands and praise him again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but 
But I've nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing hallelujah Hallelujah Somebody say thank you, Lord. Tell them thank you. Tell them thank you today. Tell them thank you. Give them a clap offering today. Come on, let's tell them, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're working generation to generation, oh God. That our posterity will know, oh God. The generations to come will know, Lord, and you're doing it in our day. Amen. Why don't you turn around to several people around you? It might mean standing back up, stepping out of your pew, going to somebody that maybe you didn't come with today, learning a new name, meeting a new face, or maybe somebody you haven't had a chance to see in a long time. Aren't you thankful to be in God's house? Amen. Uh, Dawn Contreras is coming at this time, and she's going to let us know about a few things. Good morning, Dawn, and thank you. Good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning. All right. So welcome, visitors. Please fill out a connection card or use the QR code that you see up on the screen here. Thank you for giving your tithes and your offerings. If you would like to give, use the same QR code or use the offering box that's located in the back by the double doors. Uh, a reminder that VBS is coming up August 8th through 12th, and we are super excited. Um, the theme is monumental, so we need you to register on our website. So we need to register your kids, and we need your donations. So if you receive the email with the link to the list of items, please use that to sign up or uh, to sign up to bring something. If not, you can give financially. Just make sure that you mark VBS in the memo. We also need some easy pop-up tents that we can use during the week. So if you have one, please let Christina Matthew know. Uh, setup for VBS is going to be on Saturday, August 6th, which is this Saturday, beginning at 10 a.m. sharp. So please join us at the church to help decorate. So the more people we have, the less time it takes and the easier it is. Okay? Okay. Um, we are hoping to put together a trip to Sight and Sound on November 12th, but we need a head count. So it's going to be about $175. It includes the bus ride, the show, and a meal. So if you would be interested in going, please see Danita today with the number of people you expect to go. Online folks, please email the church as soon as possible. So at this point, we're going to have the super kids come up. I know it's summertime, but we always have some kids during Super Kids. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. It always takes one to break it, right? It always takes one to, to break it coming in. All right. We have everybody? All right. Everybody turn around to the church and say hi. I'm here to learn more about God today. All right, so how do we pray, guys? One, two, three, four. Thank you, Lord, for this day that you have given us. Thank you for the great weather, the great people, and the kids who are able to come out today. Lord, please prepare their minds and their hearts for the cool things that's going to be going on downstairs. Please allow them to be able to digest every single part of it and be able to be excited to tell their parents about what they learned about today. We pray for the Super Kids staff that's going to be preparing the message and all the activities downstairs. Let them be the vessels to be used to send your message to their hearts and minds. We thank you, Lord God. Amen. All right, guys, you're going to go. You're going to follow Miss Yvette that way. Truth seekers, you guys are going to go in the back. Uh, I'm just so thankful. Um, a dear, dear um, child of God and key part of this body who has been here for decades, and we are so happy to see you, Emma. Uh, Emma Rios, we love you. I know you might feel like you're running for president, but you know, we, uh, we really just, we, we love you and are so thankful to see you today. God bless you. Again, for, for a lot of faces that we haven't seen in quite some time, uh, we just welcome you. Uh, and so thankful to be able to just serve one another, minister to one another, and worship him together. Amen? Worship him together. That's why we come together, right? We come together 
to worship him, but also to serve one another, to serve one another. And I'm just trusting today that God is going to continue to do a work here today. Isn't that fantastic just to hear from Ariana? Just, uh, boy, the fruit doesn't fall far from the tree. That's all I could say in her preparation and organizational process there. Yes. Well, you know, there are uh, two things that I am noticing more and more these days when it comes to shopping. I'm sure there are no shockers to you. One is uh, less and less plastic bags, right? Less and less plastic bags. Of course, for a lot of us that need plastic bags at home, that means we're actually ordering them through Amazon or something else now, whether you maybe have a baby at home or a dog or something of that nature. But the second thing is also more and more self-checkout lines more and more self-checkout lines. I don't know if you've noticed that at various stores, the way that they've begun to expand that. I don't know if it'll eventually get sort of like the toll uh, system where it's sort of like personless tolls and eventually uh, personless checkouts. But I've noticed that the only problem is I don't always know clearly how many items or too many items to go through the self-checkout line. Anybody with me? Because not all stores dictate that so clearly. Uh, now, this woman here, I'm not sure. Does she have too many items for the self-checkout line? Because that's what she's on right now. Just not sure. You know, I know you'd say, oh, that's, that's too many, too many. Um, and, you know, I just, I just never know. And again, this combination of you know, no plastic bags available in that moment, plus not knowing how many items you know, that I can put in a self-checkout line, you know, the two things together sometimes provide like a lethal combination for me. Because all of a sudden, you know, I'm there on the line, it just happened to me not too long ago, and I was there in the self-checkout line, apparently there was no limit to the number of items I could have in my cart. I'm watching all the people around me, there's no sign up, so I start doing it. There's only one thing that I failed to bring with me, and you know what it is. It's the bags. The bags. And we have a zillion now like bags at home that we bought at one time or another. So there's no way I'm buying another bag. There's just no way. It's the principle at this point. It's the principle. Bad on me. I failed God today. I failed to bring my bags. So now I start taking the items out of the cart and putting them into the you know, bagging counter there, the bagging thing. I start doing it. And you know I don't know if you've done this before. When I try to lift the item, that's right. It all of a sudden just sends the store police on me. And all of a sudden, it's like heaven opens, and it tells me, you are bad here. You know? You can't do this. So I say, OK, I'm going to beat the system here. I don't have any bags. I'm not going to buy a bag. I'm going to start stacking my items like a Jenga puzzle here. And I start stacking, I start fitting things. No, 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 that one's got to go this way. This one, of course, Kivian was not with me. I did not tell her this until just now, you know? And I'm just doing it, I'm doing it, and I'm like, this is crazy. You know, this is, this is insane. I get, you know, I, I, eventually I'm like, all right, th that's it, that's it. You know, I mean, the person it has to trust me. You know, I'm going to have to start putting things in the cart over here. You know, what, what was the problem here? What was the problem? You know, the, the problem was that I had really too much in my cart to handle this on my own on a self-checkout line. It was just too much. Now, you might say, but my store allows me. OK, that's fine. I'm not talking about your store, OK? All I can tell you is that the store where I was at and the stores I've, been, I've frequented, it was too much in my cart in order to handle it on my own. Some of you today come into this place, and you've got too much in the cart. Too much in the cart. God is just preparing the ground here today. He's been preparing the ground here this weekend. I can tell you that right now. Just as the men were gathered yesterday. Some of the men just give a shout out for our brother Ken and our time yesterday. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Yeah. God's been preparing us all throughout this weekend. All throughout this week even for some of you here. Through this time of worship and song through the prayers that have been going up. You've got too much in the cart, and you've been trying to handle it on your own self-checkout line. Trying to handle it on your own, and you know what? If you're honest with yourself, <laughs> you'd admit it's not working. It's not working. Before you know it, when you try to stack all the items, this and that, things are going to start falling down. Things are going to start you know, tumbling over. Even things are going to start shattering. 
shattering. And for some of you, that's, that's where you are right now. There's just been so much, so much going on in your heart, in your life, in your soul, and you've been really trying to handle it on your own self-checkout line. And I pray today, today would be a day that, that we begin to move into this place where in just a little while the team's going to come back because I believe God moves through a time of, of, of song as it's being lifted up to him and he begins to minister to hearts and lives. And we're seeing that this morning already. And I pray today that you would come to that place of recognizing, I can't do this on my own. There's too much in the cart. I need him today. I need him today. Church goer, church leader, I'm talking to you just as much as the person who hasn't been in church in ages or has never been here before. I'm talking just as much to you. If there's anything that we see about the people in the Bible, it's that time and again, even the greatest heroes of the faith, as we call them, they're just like you and me. Turn to somebody and say, they're just like you. And they're just like me. Yeah, I'm talking about the people from the Bible. Because a lot of times we place them on some untouchable pedestal and we say, oh, well, that was them. Well, that was, that was Moses. That was, that was Elijah. Let, let's just talk about them for a few moments before we move into a time of prayer today. Real people with real issues, real failures, real fears. People used by God one moment only to be on the brink of despair, even the very next. Men like Moses, this great leader and deliverer of God's people, but do you realize a man who faced frustration after frustration, who as a leader had to deal with complaint after complaint? There was no putting out the suggestion or the complaint box, you know, for leading Israel from Moses' part. No, the people just did it on their own. And it was driving him to this place of despair. The Bible tells us in Numbers 11 that Moses cried out in prayer, I am not able to carry all this people alone. The burden is too heavy for me. Anybody feel like that? The burden is too heavy for me. There's too much in my cart, God. There's too much. And he continues saying, if you will treat me like this, kill me at once. If I find favor in your sight, that I may not see my wretchedness. You say, what's, what's going on, Mo? What's going on? I mean, this is Moses. I mean, if there's ever been a man known as a powerful, you know, leader of God's people, in spite of all his deficiencies, in spite of all his, you know, inadequacies and insecurities, this was a man, and it continues to be a man today, that is looked to as a powerful leader among God's people. A man who saw the miraculous like none of us has ever seen. I'll tell you what's going on. There's too much in the cart. There's too much in the cart. And he's trying to use the self-checkout line. And it wasn't working. Would you please hear me? It wasn't working even for Moses even for Moses, because no matter your title, no matter how mightily God has used you at one point or shown up in your life, no matter the ministry he's given you or the, the role that he's allowed you to serve in, you're not meant to handle life on your own. Tell your neighbor, you can't do it on your own. You might try, you might fool a lot of people in thinking that you're handling it just fine on your own. But you can't. We weren't designed to, especially when the people that you thought you could look to, like Moses, for love and support, are instead those who leave you feeling at your worst. Your worst. Some of you can relate today. I'm talking about the pressures the negative pressures that come in on you because of the voices and the people around you. 
People you thought, I, I can count on them. They're going to be there for me. Maybe some of the closest people to you in your life or family. But instead, they became that source of despair in your life. This is where Moses was. And folks, unless you and I face the fact that we need him, that we desperately need help from our maker who came to be our savior, that people will let us down. But how many of you know that he will never? He will never. The Bible says that Jesus committed himself to no man for he knew what was in a man. <laughs> That's me. That's you. He knows. Oh God, I disappointed God. I, I disappoint. No, you didn't. I let him down. No, you didn't. As others have said, you were never holding him up. He already knew. He's not like you and me. He already knows. And unless we face the fact that we need him, oh, how we need him, we'll find ourselves not simply in a place of desperation, but in a place of utter despair. How I need him. This is what a man named Elijah found out. Even after an amazing display of God's power and might showing up, supernatural divine fire coming from heaven in response to Elijah's prayer of faith that even centuries later the, the, the New Testament will say that Elijah was a man just like us but, but his prayers, I'll paraphrase, his prayers made a difference and that the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. In other words, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. And it's using Moses as the, and, and Elijah as the example. But even after witnessing God's power and might show up, Elijah found himself running for his life with a hit put on him by not only the most powerful woman in the land, but the most wicked woman in the land. The Bible tells us Elijah was afraid, or maybe more appropriately, when Elijah saw. Elijah saw. When we're going simply by the natural and just seeing things in the natural, man, you and I, we will be filled with fear. We will run for our lives. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there. While he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord. Some of our men were just talking about this this past, this past weekend here, coming to that place of saying, I've had enough. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. You want to go, wait, wait, what, Elijah? I, I thought that was a 21st century, you know, teen phenomenon somehow, where, you know, we're just immersed in the social media culture, and there's all sorts of problems and pressures and this and that. Are, are you saying all the way back to what, like 9th century B.C.? Coming to this place of despair? Yeah, because that's what happens, folks, when there's, there's too much in the cart and you're trying to handle it on your own in the self-checkout line of life. You can't do it. I don't care how powerfully God has used you. I don't care how much you say, oh, but I did this and God used me in this gifting and His Holy Spirit used me in this way and, and God showed up in this way. It doesn't matter. I've listened to pastors tell their stories, successful pastors, so to speak, and I believe successful because they've done a great kingdom work, who have said, I came to that place while I was riding my motorcycle, and I thought in the next moment, you know, I can run this thing right off the mountain. Why? Because they hit that place of despair. They love Jesus, but they were overwhelmed by just so much. And just thinking of ways, how can, I, how can I end this? Pastors, not faraway places, my friend. Guys that I know. You say, Elijah, I don't get it. Elijah, think about how you single-handedly took on hundreds of false prophets. And by the power of God, you won. 
you won. Everybody wants your autograph. Everybody wants to buy your book now. Everybody wants to watch you on YouTube, Elijah. Look at all those views. You're killing it. How could you talk about ending your life now, Elijah, when God has been so good? Folks, because that is what happens when there's too much in the cart. When you're spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally exhausted. And the enemy is hammering you with fear. Hammering you with fear. For Moses, it was the pressure from the people. For Elijah, it was fear. Fear of what was going to happen to him. In this place of depletion, utter exhaustion, some of you are there right now. Some of you are there. God's here to meet you today. He's here to meet you today. Please, in a few moments, I don't care what it looks like for you, if it means curling up under a pew, if it means stepping out, if it means standing up, if it means walking around the room, wherever you are, even online, I don't know what it's going to look like for you. And please know, this is not an end-all, be-all moment. This is just perhaps the first step today in this place. The first step, because from here, God wants to meet you and me every day in that place, as we've talked about recently, that place of intimacy, that place of dependency, that place of obedience in him day in and day out. Every choice, every decision, every moment along the way. But please don't miss this moment. This place, God has you here. In this place, Faith Assembly member or guest today, he has you here today for a reason, for a purpose. Folks, everyone has a breaking point. I've talked to other pastors and I said, listen, I get it. I get it because we have no problem in, in agreeing to the fact that if the guy's in the gym bench pressing and they put on another 50 pound plate and another 50 pound plate and another, we say, no, I can't do it. It's, the, the, bar's gonna, if, the bar's gonna just collapse on me if you put it while I'm pressing it. But we forget that the same thing can happen to us emotionally and spiritually, that eventually it breaks. When we try to press it on our own, we will break. We will break. Is this not what we see playing out in the life of Judas Iscariot? One of Jesus' very own 12 disciples. You know, we always think immediately, because of how the Gospels obviously describe him after the fact, we immediately describe, you know, we immediately think of him as this crafty, as they say in Yiddish, you know, shyster. This crafty shyster, and that's how he was, that's how he's always been, you know, that, that was always his story. Even yesterday as we were talking with some of the men and just thinking about some people in our lives, in the world around us, being reminded, is that really how they always were? Were they always thinking about or committing that sin? And that's how oftentimes we picture Judas, but don't forget that he very well might have started out with some of the best intentions when it came to following Jesus. Because guess what? That's what I see happens in real life. We're quick to point the finger at the big name person out there. Or that person may be connected to us in the family or however it might be in the church or wherever. But please, don't, don't always think that they went into this thing or, or did this always from the beginning with the most you know, corrupt intentions. It's not how it often happens. It's not how it happens. He seems to be among those who performed miraculous healings and powerful deliverances in Jesus' name, just like the other apostles. In fact, don't forget what, Ma what Jesus says there in Matthew 7. Many will come to me in, in that day and say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not? And he'll go on with a list of things, and I can't help but think that he's got Judas and others in mind. 
The Gospels don't tell us otherwise. As far as we can tell, he was probably right there laying hands on the sick and watching people be healed and seeing people set free from the powers of darkness. But eventually things took a turn. Things took a turn as he sold out Jesus for a price. But the Bible tells us that once Judas realized that Jesus was going to be executed because of the deal that he struck with the religious leaders, it was too much for even him to handle. The Gospel of Matthew tells us when Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us, they replied. That's your responsibility. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and hanged himself. What happened? What happened without a doubt the Gospels are clear, spiritual forces of evil, even Satan himself drove him to this place that, that he never thought he would go to. And the spiritual forces of evil were closing in on, on him, driving him to this place now of utter despair. But don't miss the fact that his cart was so filled with guilt and remorse that it became too much for him to bear. Folks, is that where some of you are today? I know what that is to be so full of guilt and remorse and shame, regret in your life in that moment. You don't know what to do. You don't know who to turn to. You don't know, will God really receive me? I can't share this with anybody. Will he really love me? And oh, as the song says, oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. He loves us. He loves you. It became too much. I just wish for a moment Judas understood that. I know God had a plan and he was sovereign over all, but oh, somehow or another, if he would just in that moment understand, Judas, Judas, you don't have to carry this burden on your own. We say, oh, but did not the scriptures have to be fulfilled? Yes, I understand, but, but God's sovereign plan and purpose, it never takes away our responsibility as human beings. And oh, how I wish that Judas knew. Judas, it doesn't have to end like this. I know there's so much in your cart, but you don't have to bear this alone, my friends. Young person, adults here today, wherever you find yourself in life's journey, wherever you find yourself in this journey with Jesus, checking it out or been in Jesus for years, that guilt, that remorse, that regret you're carrying, you don't have to carry it on your own. The song said, shackled by a heavy burden, neath a load of guilt, and shame. Then the hand of Jesus touched me. And now, now I am no longer the same. He touched me. He touched me. Let him touch you today with his guilt freeing, condemnation freeing, shame freeing love today. Let him touch you today. Let him minister to you today. But somehow or another in this, regardless of how much he's willing and does it at times in spite of us, there's still this place where we are called to yield to it. 
to open our hearts to it, to embrace it. He can knock us off our high horse as he did one man named Saul of Tarsus, but it's still up to us to call him Lord. It's still up to us to say yes to that love, to that grace, to that mercy. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. I've been reminded of the saying time and again throughout this week, not simply preparing for today. No, it just comes to me here and now in this moment, but in speaking with people with real issues, real problems, real guilt, real shame. Here's a trustworthy saying, said the Apostle Paul. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And Paul said, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy in order to be an example for all those who would believe in him. In order to be an example of his unlimited patience. Listen, I don't know what you're carrying around today, what you're pushing around today in your cart. I don't know what it looks like in your heart and your soul, but we know as even Ariana from the lips of babes it will come today that God does. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God, he looks at the heart. He looks at the heart. He sees the pain. He sees the guilt. He sees the remorse. He sees the shame, the embarrassment. He sees it all. You don't have to do this on your own. You do not have to do this on your own. You cannot do this on your own. You're not meant to do this on your own. God did not design you or me to do this on our own. You're not meant to live on the self-checkout line of life. This is why David said, blessed be the Lord. Can you read the next part of it together with me? Who daily bears us up. God is our salvation. In other words, who day by day, yom, yom, bears our burdens, in other words, who carries our load. How many of you are sick and tired of carrying your load? That load. This is why Peter wrote, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you, he was drawn from the Psalms, cast all your cares upon the Lord. He will sustain you. David and Peter knew that without the Lord, without the help of God, they would never be where they were. They would never have made it that far. They would never be able to write about the things that they were writing about, not without the help of the Lord. Anybody know what it is to be down only for God to pick you up? Anybody know? That as your story, your testimony. Anybody know what it is to be too weak to go on, but to find that when you were too weak, he is oh so strong. He is so strong. I love when the psalmist said that I know these two things that you, oh God, I might be getting them in the wrong order, but I know this, that you, oh God, are loving and that you, oh God, are strong. That you're strong. I love that. What a perfect combination that we could ever ask for. A loving God, but a strong God. A strong God. There's a reason why that, that big box uh, from Amazon or Walmart or wherever you order from comes in and often will say to it, two-person lift required. Have you seen that? Because I sure have. I know I had my son and probably Natan the other day help me to lift it on their own, but you know, you know th th there are some things there are some things in life that we recognize. It's too much for us to carry on our own. But some of us are willing to break our backs only to suffer the consequences of that. We insist on it. I'm going to do this on my own. I'm going to carry this on my own. I'm going to carry this load on my own. No, no, no. I don't want to bother the pastor right now. I'm going to take a... No, no. I don't want to bother the people in the church. You know what? They never come and talk to me anyway. Uh-oh. I just went down a wrong trail, didn't I? All right. I'll say it again anyway. They don't bother with me anyway. They don't come and talk to me anyway. Folks, please rem remember we are called to be a body. A church. Don't ever blame others for not coming to talk to you until you've already made the effort to go and talk to others. We need each other. 
I, I can't bother anybody with that, though. I can't bother anybody with that. Folks, it's in one hand a shame that the, the seats, the pews, are the way that they are because it's very spectator-like. Very spectator-like. That's not what we're called to be as a church. Somebody say amen. 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 This is not about a one-man show or two or three. No, no, we need each other. This is why the Bible says make every effort to keep right, the unity of the Spirit. This is why it says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. We need each other. We're not called to man this thing by ourselves. We need one another. Sometimes we get to that place of refusing to get the help for the loads that were meant to be carried by more than just us. And we even refuse looking to God for help. We even refuse and we don't even realize it because we keep going and going and going and trying and trying and trying on our own. I'm so glad that wallet was found, right? I'm so glad that that wallet was found. Couldn't assure it, I couldn't, couldn't guarantee it, but I just knew that, you know, we need to pray about this, right? The simple things, day-to-day -day things, we just put on cruise control and we're like, no, 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 I got this. I can do this on my own. Meanwhile, the cart is getting more and more full. Another stressor, another problem, another issue, family, at work, around us, in our neighborhoods, whatever it might be. And God is like, seek me. Seek my face. Seek my face. Folks, that's what I'm praying before you exit these doors today and seek a good lunch. You will first Decide, I will seek his face. I will seek his face. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He says that he gives strength to the weary, and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope, those who wait upon the Lord, will renew their strength. They will mount up. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Can you say thank you, God? Thank you, God. Would you stand across this room as our musicians come? Folks, isn't it time to get off of the self-checkout line? There's just too much in the cart. Too much in the cart. I pray today that you and I would be humble enough, humble enough to say, God, I need you. Lord, I need you. Folks, there are a lot of things that I end up preaching about at times that I've not experienced personally, but I know that it's true to God's word. It's true to God's word. And so I have a responsibility as one who speaks and teaches and preaches God's word to be sure that I'm preaching it faithfully. Sometimes even if that particular uh, circumstance or experience is not something that I went through. But this I can tell you. One of the best days in my life was that day when I came to that place of realizing I can't do it anymore on my own. I can't. Nobody else knew my story. Nobody else knew what was going on. But I knew I can't do it. God, will you really love me? Will you really embrace me? Boy, oh boy, I can tell you, he did. He did, and he does. He does. Don't count yourself out today. Thank you, team. Why bear this alone? As the team just leads us, let it just wash over you today. Like I said to you, it might be sitting down where you are, kneeling down at your seat, coming forward over here, finding a place over there, 
walking even as you pray, falling face down on the mat, whatever it looks like today. Just saying, God, I'm done trying to do this on my own. I'm getting off the self-checkout line. There's too much in my cart, Lord. I need you. I need you. Would you begin to come and allow God's Spirit just to minister to you as you take that step out in faith to minister to Him. Thank you, team. Come. For so long I believed I tried, but nothing could satisfy, nothing could satisfy, still all you want is this empty space, so here's my heart, would you take this praise, Jesus? Jesus, how I need you to fill me. Jesus, Jesus, how I need you to fill me.
say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Please do not forget, as Moses would learn, even there in Numbers 11, that you and I are called not only to allow God to bear our burdens, but we're called to bear one another's burdens. To bear one another's burdens. And that means not only being someone that others can count on to walk with them through the trials and through the issues and through the mess-ups of life, but also allowing others to come alongside us. Allowing others to come alongside you to bear those burdens. Again, it's so important. It's why it's so important for us to stay connected, to stay connected to one another, to stay connected to God's church, His people. So Father, we thank you. We thank you for meeting with us in this moment, oh God. We thank you for meeting with us in this space that you've given us, in this freedom that you've given us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you've been at work far before we ever stepped foot in this room today, and you will continue to be at work, for we do not simply go to church, but we are your church. And although this service might come to a close, we thank you that the work of the church goes forward through us, your people. So we say, Lord, use us. Help us to stay connected to you every day in prayer, to stay connected to your word, the Bible, and to stay connected to one another to those that you've placed in our lives who need Jesus. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. I'm going to bless you and I'm going to ask you, team, could you make a transition so we can go into that chorus of Christ be magnified. That'd be great. I just pray that today, even as we go from this place, we can just let it be a song on our lips and in our hearts today. Christ be magnified. Christ be magnified. So now go, knowing that you're not alone on this journey. Jesus is with you always. So no matter what you face, no matter when, no matter where, no matter who, cast your cares upon him because he, the good shepherd, cares for you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and everyone said, Amen, amen. Let's sing it strong. Oh, Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. And oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life.
brings transformation Then I'll be crucified with you Cause death is just a doorway Into resurrection life And if I join you in your sufferings Then I'll join you when you rise